As a man, Father God, we are so much blessed, we are so much honored even to be in this place that Father you ordained for us to be. You send out the invitation, Father God, because you had something special, because you had a word, you had a blessing, you had a revelation for every one of us. And Father, even as you've obeyed your word, you say those who honor you, Father God, you're going to honor them. Father, you know the heart of every one of us. You know our needs. You know the cry of everyone's heart. You know the need for direction for every one of us. And Father, even as you're about to open your word, may you come and minister to us. We know every moment that the entrance of your word comes into our life, it brings a light. Let there be light. Let there be life. Let there be joy. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. This is a message that the Lord has been speaking to us for the last three Sundays. And it's all about being prepared because we're in the last days. Amen. And today God wants us to bring us into another also aspect of it. Because as we are living in the last days, every one of us has a responsibility. It doesn't mean that we are going to leave everything that we do and just wait for the last day and just wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. No. Though we are in the last days, we need to live with wisdom. Hallelujah. We need to be ready even in the midst of everything that we are doing. We all of us know the story about Gideon. When Gideon, Gideon was raised up, Gideon was raised up that he may deliver the children of Israel from the Midianites. And therefore Gideon, when he was given this assignment, he decided to gather the largest army he could ever gather. He had over 22,000 soldiers. And God told them, these soldiers, there are so many, I'm not going to deliver Israel with these soldiers, least they say it was by their own power. He told them, I want to proclaim to these soldiers, if there is anyone that is fearful, let him go home. And when Gideon proclaimed to the entire 22 battalion of soldiers, he said, be there anyone that is fearful, go home. He was left with the 10,000. God still said, the 10,000, there are too many. I want you to bring these 10,000 to the river. And I want them to drink. And from there I'm going to choose whom I'm going to take to go with. And all of them, they didn't know they were going through a test. And they were brought to, the, brought to the river and they were told, drink. And the Bible tells us, only 300 of them, when they were drinking, they didn't lie on their belly. They drank and they were lapping and they were looking. And God says, these ones are fit to go with me. Hallelujah. Yeah. And this is what God wants us to be. Yes, we are in the world. Yes, we are living in this moment. Yes, there are things that we are believing God for. But still, we don't need to sleep on the ground and forget that there is eternity we need to look at. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, we are going to do battle. And as we are doing battle, we are going to drink and laugh as we are looking around. Hallelujah. We are going to be watchful because we know we are in the last days and we know that we are surrounded by the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, we are in the last days and that's why we need wisdom. Hallelujah. I want us to open our Bibles in the book of Nahum. Nahum is in the Old Testament before the book of Habakkuk after the book of Micah. Nehum chapter 2. He says from verse number 1 He who scatters, he who destroys, has come before your face. Man the fort or man the walls. Watch the road. Strengthen your flax. Fortify your power mightily. For the Lord will restore the excellence of Jacob, like the excellence of Israel. For the emptiers have emptied them out and ruined their branches. He said, he that is out to destroy, he's out destroying with all his zeal in these last days. And we as the children of God, we need to be alert. We need to be on the watch. 
We need to man our walls. We need to fortify ourselves. We need to be ready. Hallelujah. Least that which God has put in you may be taken away. This is what even the Apostle John was saying in the book of Revelation chapter 12. This is what he saw. We know that the chapter 12, he said that there was a war that broke out in heaven. The devil, the dragon fought, and the angels of God fought. But we know that the dragon did not prevail, but he was cast out. And he was cast out into this earth. And this is what he says. From verse number 9, Revelation 12. So the dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil, and Satan who de deceives the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation, strength, and the kingdom of, of our God, and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and that they did not their love, their love their love to death. Therefore now rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe! Woe to the inhabitants. When the Bible says woe, it means woe. When the Bible says woe, it means be careful. It says woe to the inhabitants of the earth, who are inhabiting the earth. We are inhabiting the earth. He says, and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Amen. The enemy has come, he knows he has a short time. Jesus told us he has only one mission, he has only one purpose. In John 10, 10, he says, he comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. The Bible makes us know that hell was not prepared for us. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. And because it was prepared for the devil and his angels, you can imagine how God made it to be unbearable. But the enemy doesn't want to go there alone. He wants to snatch the children of God with him. And that's why the title of our message this afternoon, it says, we need to build the walls. Hallelujah. We need to build the walls. We need to be ready. We need to guard ourselves. We need to prepare ourselves. Hallelujah. I want us today, we are going to go to the book of Nehemiah. And you're going to use Nehemiah as a man that God used to build the wall as an example to us. Hallelujah. Because I believe when you look around, when you see what is happening, we see that the walls need to be built. Hallelujah. No one wants to live in a house without walls. Amen. Amen. You know what it means to live in a house without walls. I have this a church they call without walls. I, was, I wasn't surprised to find that the one who started it left it. And the wife was married three times. Because you can't live without walls. Hallelujah. We all need to have walls. Glory to God. Because walls mean there is protection. Walls means, meaning that you've been covered from all kind of reproach. And now it happened that after the exile, when the children of Israel they were taken out of their promised land, the walls were brought down. And now Nehemiah was in the king's palace. He was a king's cupbearer, and he received a report. I want us to go to the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament after the book of Ezra. And I want us to look chapter 1 and verse number 3. It says, And they said to Nehemiah, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. Wherever there is no walls, there is distress. Wherever there is no walls, there is reproach. Wherever there is no walls, you can be attacked anytime by anything and you don't know even what attacked you. Our life ought not to be like a life without walls. Amen. We need to have walls. We need to have protection. We need to be 
secure in the presence of God. Hallelujah. So he was told the survivors, those who are left in the city of Jerusalem, they are in great distress and reproach. And the walls of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are bound with fire. So when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days, I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. This is something that convicted or touched the heart of Nehemiah. Though he was in the comfort of the palace, though he was in the comfort of Babylon, but he knew, how can my people be living without wars? How can we be living in this society where it looks there is no more wars? Family are breaking down, our children are being, are being infiltrated with things, we don't want them to touch them. Here's a time that we declare that there is going to be a war. Hallelujah! That we want God to be the wall, to be the one to surround, to be the one to keep our children, to, to be the one to keep our families because we know without wars the enemy can come anytime and can destroy everything. So when Nehemiah had this thing he took it as a burden. The, word, the name Nehemiah by itself is a comfort to us because it means Yahweh's comfort. Hallelujah. That's why when this man hears about these things he goes to God because he knows who is his comfort. Hallelujah. When we hear, when we see the things which are happening, we cannot run to anywhere else. But God alone is our comfort. Hallelujah. If you've not made God to be your comfort, if your comfort is somebody else, you are leaning on a falling wall. If you, know, if you have made money to be your comfort, if you have made things to be your comfort, you are standing on a sinking ground. Who do you go to when you see the things are getting out of your hand? It is to God. Hallelujah. So Nehemiah decided to go before God. He took it as a burden in his own heart. Hallelujah. When you look at things that are happening in this world at this moment, we ought to have a burden in our heart. When you see the way the young children are behaving, when you see the way the families are breaking down, when you see the way things are happening before very eyes, the things which are condemned in the word of God, and now they are being called the things which people are celebrating, we ought to have a burden in our heart, just like Nehemiah. If he came to his heart and said, something has to be done. This is not normal. When the abnormal becomes normal, when the darkness becomes light, when the error becomes the truth, then it means we are in the last times. Hallelujah. When what people need to be ashamed of becomes the things that they can stand and be proud of, it means we are in the last days. And we can't just sit there and just watch because we know that God is a God who remains the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. The standard of God does not lower because people have lowered the standard. No. God remains to be God. What was seen in Sodom and Gomorrah, even in today, whether the ministers, whether the president, is in the same kind of thing, it remains a sin. Whether it is your child, you're not going to just to condemn God to justify your child. It remains a sin. Hallelujah. That is the God we serve. So when Nehemiah heard about this news, it came into his heart a great burden. Something that you're not going to be restful. Not something that you see and you laugh. Not something you see and you make fun of it. It's something that you see and you say, Oh God, have mercy. Hallelujah. When Jesus was talking in the book of John 16 and verse number 20 was talking about the last days, he says, We shall weep and lament. Even when the world is rejoicing, even when the world is dancing, we as the children of God, you shall see and weep and lament because you can see their end. You can know their end. And he says, when you weep and lament, your, your weeping shall be turned into joy. Why? Because when you weep and lament and pray, then God will move in and change those who need to be changed. Hallelujah. Convict those who need to be convicted. There are things we need to be seeing that ought to be making us to weep and lament. Hallelujah. Because you know that when, when somebody goes, the Bible says it is appointed for man once to die. When somebody goes, 
it's all over. There is no coming back. There is no second chance. We have only chance when we live in this world. Things can only be changed in this world. When you die, it is over. Whether you invite Pope to offer your, your like a mass, it doesn't mean it won't change your position. You'll still be in the same place. Whether the whole world gathers together and they pray for you, they cannot change anything. The only time we can change anything is now when people are alive. Amen. Amen. And that's why we need to continue weeping and lamenting. Don't give up on your brothers and sisters who don't believe. Don't give up on, your, on the members of your family who don't believe. Continue weeping. Continue lamenting. Continue crying to God. And Amen. God will touch them. Hallelujah. Amen. So we shall weep and lament. And the world is going to rejoice. But as you weep and lament just like Nehemiah, you know that God is going to do something. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is going to do something. Because we know that as he was weeping and as he was lamenting, God opened the door for him to go to Jerusalem and be the one to build the wall. Hallelujah. Amen. When you pray for somebody, God gives you the opportunity to lead them to Jesus or to lead somebody else. When you pray for somebody, when you have that burden, God reveals to you, God shows you the way in which you can be able to help the person come to the light. But when you don't pray for them, when you don't have burden for them, why should God show you anything about them or give you anything about them? Because you're not concerned. We are born again not only for ourselves. We are born again and given the great commission. That we should go and reach out. We should go and pray for them. We should go and bring them back into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So Nehemiah is about to build the wall. But he, as he's about to build the wall, we see that there's an enemy who comes against him. Whatever you want to do, whatever God has called you to do, whatever you want to serve God with all your heart, you'll be confronted by opposition. God will bring you enemy against you because whatever you're about to do is going to glorify God. The enemy doesn't want that God to be glorified. And therefore, he'll try to frustrate, he'll try to stop you, he'll try to bring all kind of confusion on your way. But let us be determined. Hallelujah. The enemy is going to be there. We all need the enemy because without the enemy, I wouldn't be born again. If there was no enemy, we wouldn't be here. Hallelujah. It's the enemy that makes us run to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So when you see your enemy, they make you to be who you are. They, you can't sleep when you know you're living in the midst of an enemy. You can't sleep when you know there's somebody who is working day and night to see you cry. Or to see you down. Hallelujah. It will make you arise and be all that God has called you to be. Hallelujah. Also for Nehemiah, he had an enemy. They are the Sanabalat and the Tobias. They came against him because they knew that whatever they were about to do, the enemy will have no part. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you make a decision to start praying, that's when you experience opposition. When you make a decision to fast, that's when you experience opposition. You know, have you ever even tried sometimes? You can stay the whole day without even eating. But on that day, you say, I'll fast on that day. That's when the hunger comes like something else. Even you don't drink tea in the morning, but the day tomorrow I'm going to fast. You wake up very thirsty for the tea. Whatever, because you made a decision, you want to pray. And then it is about to confront you, but we are not going to give up. Hallelujah. When you make a decision to go to church, that's when they call. Mm, next Sunday I'll go to church. On that Friday, on that Saturday, there'll be parties, there'll be all kinds of things. So that you don't come to church on Sunday. But if you made a decision, God is going to give you the grace and don't back, don't go backward, but move forward. Hallelujah. Amen. We need the enemy. If it wasn't for the for the brothers of Joseph, Joseph could not have gone to Egypt. But they sent him to Egypt. But they didn't know that as they were sending him to Egypt, they thought that they are going to cut short the dream that he was talking about, but they didn't know that they were quickening. They were hastening that dream. Amen. If it wasn't for the Pharaoh who was so much oppressing the children of Israel, they could not have cried. But when you read Exodus chapter 3, when God came to Moses, he says, now they've cried. 
Because the Bible says when God spoke to Abraham, he told them yeah, they'll, they'll go in a land and be slaves for 400. But now it was only 430 years. 30 more years, God brought another Pharaoh who oppressed them. And they started crying. If there was no oppression, they would not have cried. But when they cried, God said, I've had your cry. Amen. And now I'm about to bring you out. Hallelujah. Amen. The enemy is good because he makes us to be sober. Hallelujah. If Benina was not disturbing Hannah and provoking her all the time, Hannah could not come to a place where she said, I'm going to pray and wrestle without God until I get my, my baby. Hallelujah. I want to be a real woman. I want to embrace my own baby. But the Bible says all the time Benina was provoking her. But he didn't provoke her in Bible. He provoked her to pray. Hallelujah. The enemy, whatever we see, let us, let us be provoked to pray. Let us be provoked to stand. To stand. Let us be provoked to raise a standard. To say no. We are not going this low. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to serve God according to what he has ordained. Amen. If it wasn't for Goliath, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have known about David so much. But that giant made David to be who he became to be. Hallelujah. Amen. So in these last days, we need to be building walls. No matter the position, no matter the enemy. Even if you see things are breaking or things are turning out in your family in a way that you didn't think, is the moment for you to start praying. Hallelujah. It's the moment for you to confront the enemy and he will rest. He'll run away from you. The Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. As you draw near to God, God is going to draw near to you. Hallelujah. We see that. I want us to go to, to that book of, uh, of Nehemiah chapter 4 verse number 17. Because the enemy all the time was trying different things. One time he was mocking. Another time he was trying to make them to be afraid. Another time he was trying to do all kinds of things. But Nehemiah was not shaken. He was not moved. This is what he decided to do. Verse number 17. He says, Those who built on the wall, those who carried burdens, loads themselves so that with one hand they worked at the construction and with another hand they had the weapon. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. One hand, we are doing whatever we need to do. On the other side, we are still prepared. Hallelujah. And that is all about salvation. Salvation is we are ready to go home and we are ready to leave. Amen. If Christ tarries, we are ready to continue living. And if he comes, we are ready to go home. So in one hand we are building and in the other hand we have a weapon. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 10, it says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For Nehemiah, they were taking a physical sword. But Ephesians tells us, put on the whole armor of God. Yes. Put on the whole armor of God. It's something you put on. Showing the devil that I'm ready. Hallelujah. Yes. When you come in the night, I'm ready. When you come in the day, I'm ready. All the time I'm ready. You put on your armor. The helmet of salvation. The breastplate of rationalism. Oh, the belt of truth. Oh, your feet are prepared to preach the gospel. Oh, when you're walking, you have the shield of faith because you know all the time the enemy is throwing that. You're ready to block yourself. Hallelujah. So you're, you're building your family, you're living your life, and at the same time, you're looking forward Hallelujah. to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This means you're not ready to compromise anything. Hallelujah. Amen. You're not going to give all your strength in one thing. There are people who are just giving all their strength, all their effort, just on the things of this world. They don't realize that this world is coming to an end. You may get everything, but Jesus said, what shall it profit you? When you have everything. When your name is in the newspaper in your village, and yet in heaven your name is not there. It will profit you nothing. For what can anyone give in exchange to the eternity? There's nothing we can give in exchange to the eternity. 
as you are building your life, as you are believing God for whatever you are believing God, still on one hand you have the weapon and on the other side you are building. Hallelujah! That when the enemy comes at any time, you are ready to take on him. Amen. So there are three things we need to learn from the life of Nehemiah and I believe we are the Nehemiahs of today because when you look around things are just falling apart. The world is going to become more wicked and wicked but as for us as the children of God we need to build a wall. Hallelujah. We need to establish ourselves in the things of God. We need to pray. We need to intercede that those God has ordained for them to be saved they are going to be saved. Those God had ordained them to be touched, we are going to be touched. Hallelujah. We are going to do our part in praying. So this is what happened in the life of Nehemiah. This is what made Nehemiah to be Nehemiah. He had a compassion. Hallelujah. Remember every miracle that Jesus did. He didn't do any miracle for the sake of doing miracles. He didn't do miracle to prove who he was because he knew who he was. Hallelujah. He did every miracle based on compassion. Hallelujah. He was moved by the situation. He was moved by the circumstance. He was moved when he saw there was a need. Let us walk as those who are moved. Hallelujah. Yes, we are moved. moving around. When you see something move, you have compassion. And when you have compassion, you don't have compassion and do nothing. When you have compassion, you pray. It may not be a big prayer. You may just see somebody or some youth behaving in a manner and you say, Oh God, have mercy. Touch that child. Touch that person. I declare those chains are broken in the mighty name of Jesus. And it may be only one prayer you pray for that person, but that prayer. Don't just look at them and say, You look at them and you no, no. Just look at them and whisper prayer to God. Let us be moving with compassion. Hallelujah. When you see somebody, because we, you, we know that it's not their will for them to be there. They are being blinded by the God of this age. They are in shackles, they are in chains, and they don't know, even realize they are in chains. That is the saddest thing that can happen. You are in chain, and you don't know you are in chain. You are in bondage, and you don't know in your bond, you are in bondage. But God has given us the spiritual eyes we can see. We know it's not cool when they are smoking in the street. We know it's a chain. Hallelujah. We know it's not cool when they are just staggering in the, in the street. We know it's a chain. And we have a compassion. Let's move with this heart of compassion because we have the heart of Jesus. Amen. That's why you call yourself Christian. Amen. You say you are Christ-like. What will Jesus do when you see them? What will Jesus do when he walks wherever you walk? When you see those people, they don't believe. When you enter your bus, even you don't whisper, pray, Father God, I pray for this who I'm traveling with. Save them, oh God. Hallelujah. It may be a small prayer, but let's be moving with this kind of compassion. Wherever you go and you enter the shop, there's a God. Let your spirit touch whoever it needs to be touched in this mall, in this place. Save somebody in this mall. Hallelujah. Because there are those who are there, and most who are there, they don't know Jesus. They are miserable. They are all kind of things. So let's move with that heart of compassion. We need to have more compassion because compassion is what is going to make you to pray. It's what is going to make you feel restless when you see somebody. There are some people you see, you feel just restless. You just feel there's something you can do. Maybe you can't talk to them, but you can talk to, you can talk to God about them. Hallelujah. Amen. When you go in your closet, they may not know you're praying about them, but God who sees, he knows your heart. And it sees your compassion. Amen. Let's have compassion. Especially for those families we see they're falling apart. There's no one who believes in those families. There's confusion. Pray for them. Hallelujah. Have the same compassion. Number two, Nehemiah. Where did his confidence come from? He, he was a man full of confidence. But his confidence came from the moment he spent in the presence of God in prayer and reading the word of God. We are living at a time that people, they want to show themselves macho men. They want to show them they are hero. They can do all things. But let me tell you the true men or the true women, they are those who pray. Mm, they are those who call on God. Hallelujah. They are those who know where their strength comes from. There are those who raise their hands in surrender and tap into the supernatural. 
And this is how Nehemiah was. Hallelujah. He knew my confidence, my strength can only come when I spend my time in prayer. Hallelujah. When battles come that overwhelm me, when things come that overwhelm me, when I come before God in prayer, He'll bring me to the rock that is higher than me. He'll bring me to a place that I cannot be shaken. Let's be those who get our confidence, not in what you have, but in who you are in God. In who you know God is to you. Hallelujah. You know you can come boldly into the presence of God and talk to your father and talk to God and pour your heart to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And lastly we know that Nehemiah was a man of courage. Amen. Courage means that no matter what the enemy comes, no matter what the enemy does, you're not going to give up. You're going to confront whatever needs to be confronted. You're going to do whatever needs to be done. Hallelujah. When Jesus was speaking about prayer in the book of Luke, Luke, Luke uh, the gospel of Luke 18, he said, we need to pray and not faint. And he gave a story about this judge who was all the time being, being visited by this widow. And he says, I'm becoming, I, I don't want to be weared out. The enemy wants to wear people. Don't be weary. Don't be tired, hallelujah. Don't put your hands down, but continue fighting with courage. Amen. Have the courage to face whatever you face because you know you're not facing it in your own power, in your own strength. Amen. This is what gave the strength to, for David to face Goliath. Goliath was not much to anyone in the natural. When it comes to the natural, he had the everything. He was tall, he was big, he was everything. He'll kick you one and you're, you're, you're dead. <laughs> when it comes also to the, to the armor, he had armor. And he also had a bodyguard. So, when it comes to the natural, David was no match. And that's why I told Goliath, you come to me because you trust in your power. You trust in your spear. You trust in who you are, maybe as the commander and Mr. Nobody. But I come to you in the name of the Lord, oh, yeah. God of Israel. Hallelujah! And that's what made him able to go, you know, to go courageously. When he saw Goliath, he didn't run away from him, but he ran towards him. Hallelujah. He confronted. We need to confront the enemy. Hallelujah. When you keep on hiding, when you keep on playing hide and seek on the enemy, you give him more, more, more room for him to destroy you. No, this is the moment to confront the enemy. Esther confronted the enemy. He invited the enemy to a dinner and invited the king. And he said, King, this is the enemy. This is the, hallelujah. He didn't go behind and say, This is the one. And the king said, Who? Who dare? Hallelujah. Yeah. This is how we need to have this kind of courage where we are going to confront whatever we need to confront. There are people that don't confront something because they fear, you know. No. We need to do what we need to be done. Hallelujah. That we may be able to build and make sure that our homes, they are secure and they are safe. Amen. I want us to close with one scripture in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. This is for every one of us. Amen. Amen. If you are waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, if you want to go to heaven, Hallelujah. Amen. I want to go to heaven. Amen. I always sometimes wish that the Sunday will be always. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I enjoy the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I enjoy the presence of the Lord. David said, one day in the presence of the Lord, you cannot equate it anywhere else. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because David knew what he felt when he was in the presence of the Lord. Say, one thing I'll one thing, one, one thing I'll seek. Psalms 27, that I may dwell in the tabernacle. Because in your dwelling in the tabernacle of the Lord, there is a blessing, there is a joy, there is a victory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. So if us, all of us, our aim is to go to heaven, this is for every one of us. Ephesians chapter 5. On verse number 15, starting from verse number 15, says, See then, see then, we as the children of God, I want you to walk circumspectively. Amen. See then, I want you to walk carefully. The word circumspectively means carefully. Not as fools, but as wise. wise. Amen. Not as fools, 
but as wise. The world may call you a fool, but let God call you wise. Don't let God call you a fool when the world is calling you wise. In one way or another, you are going to be a fool and you are going to be wise. I want to be wise in the things of God and foolish in the things of this world. Hallelujah. Because I know one day all of us shall stand before a creator. So let them call you fool because you go to church. Let them call you fool because you believe in God with all your heart. Let them call you fool because you carry your Bible in the bus. Everywhere you go in your pause, you are reading your Bible. Let them call you fool. But God is saying you are wise. Amen. That's why he says let us be wise. Not fools redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming mean, meaning that making use of every moment. Hallelujah. Every moment is important. The clock is ticking and God is telling us redeem every moment because you are living in the evil days. Therefore do not be unwise but understand. Amen. What the will of Lord is. Amen. Amen. The wise, they want to understand what is the will of God. What does God require from me in this time? What is God looking unto me in this moment? Am I seeking what I'm not supposed to be seeking? Am I doing what I'm not supposed to be doing? I want to be in the will of God because being in the will of God is the most wonderful thing that can ever happen. Hallelujah in your life. When you're in the will of God, that's where you find satisfaction. Amen. Amen. When you're in the will of God, there is satisfaction, there is joy. Jesus said when he came, he said, my food, my food is to do the will of him that sent me and finish it. This is when the disciples are going to collect food for him. And when they brought food, he don't want to eat. He said, I have food, you don't know about it. We eat food, all of us, to be satisfied. Amen. What he was saying that what would bring satisfaction in your life, in my life, is to be in the will of God. And that's what the Bible is telling us. Don't be unwise, but understand what is the will of God because you are seeking satisfaction. People think that I'm going to be satisfied if only I have so much money in my account. I'm going to be satisfied if only I have the children I wish to have. I'll be satisfied if only I was married or if I married the most beautiful, the most handsome man. No, that's not what brings you satisfaction. You may be married by whatever you desire and you find that you don't find satisfaction. Hello? Amen. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 4, there is a woman who met Jesus by the well. She's been married five times. She was in the sixth relationship. She was seeking for satisfaction. This man, I don't believe, she tried everything. And she, and when she was, she was found alone and she was saying, maybe something is wrong with me. The five men and the six one, they cannot be wrong. What is wrong with me? But when they, she met the man, hallelujah, yeah. Jesus himself, hallelujah. she didn't desire anything else. She was satisfied. Amen. 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 So let us not be unwise, whatever we are searching, you may gather all the money and not be satisfied. You may gather all things and not be satisfied. You may go in the places you may you wish to be and never be satisfied. Satisfaction, you may be in the desert and be satisfied. Because it's not about place. It's about the presence Hallelujah. of Him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let us not be unwise, but understand what is the will of God. And he goes down here and says, he tells us what is the will of God. And do not be drunk with wine. Do not be, do be, do not be drunk with wine in which there is dissipation. But be filled with the Spirit. The word dissipation here is the same word which is used when Jesus was speaking the parable of the prodigal son. And he said the son went out and spent his life in wasteful living. The, one, the, the son went out and spent his life in dissipation. Dissipation means anything that is wasteful. The man, why did the boy go away, that man? Because he was drunk in his mind with what hey, the life in the city. When he heard about the story in the city, Things are happening. Oh, you can do this. You can do business. Ah, his mind was drunk. Many people are drunk with so many things. Not only beer, but they are drunk with the desire to be rich. They are drunk with the, with the pleasure. They are drunk with so many things. And they say, all those you are drunk with, they are just wastes. Don't be drunk with wasteful things. Amen. But 
to be filled. Hmm. Be filled. That's the that's the best thing we can have. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. This is the best for God. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter eleven and verse number thirteen. But before that, Jesus is telling us how we need to pray, to seek, and to knock. And He says, as He's completing verse thirteen, He says. There is no father who can give his children when they ask for bread, he gives you stone. When you have to ask for fish, he gives you serpent. And now he says, verse 13, if you being so wicked, as being so wicked, we know how to give good things to our children, how much more will your heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit? Meaning that when God gives or when God has given us the Holy Spirit, he has given you the best. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you feel the Holy Spirit, you have everything because who is Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So God is with you and God is in you. Yeah. He came to be in us and He came to be with us. So when, when you pray all the time and say, God, be, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to be soft with the Holy Spirit, you're asking that, God, I want to be in your presence all, all the moment. Hallelujah. Yeah. You're not only asking for a miracle. Hallelujah. You're asking for the miracle worker himself in you. Glory to God. You're not all asking for bread only. God is giving you the whole bakery that you can make bread when you need it. God is giving you the blesser himself. And that's why he says, let us not be drunk. Let us have the Holy Spirit. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, he guide us what to do, where to go. He teaches us all things. Amen. Amen. So let us be wise. And be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, Amen. in hymns, in spiritual songs, Amen. singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. Giving thanks always Amen. for all things Amen. to God the Father. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Amen. When you make an attitude of giving thanks to the Lord always. When you always make a decision and give thanks, and choose to give thanks to the Lord, then that is where you defeat the enemy. I know every one of us, there are so many things that we want the Lord to do for us, and the enemy will try to point out those things and make you see why you don't need to give thanks. But also in our life, we know that there are things that God has done for us. Hallelujah. We are not where we want to be, but we are not where we started. God is doing great things. So choose to thank God for the things that God has done for you. Hallelujah. Even when your flesh don't feel like giving thanks, speak to your soul like David and say, Bless the Lord. You tell your soul to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't forget the benefit that the Lord has given unto you. Remember where you are. Remember where you are is a miracle for somebody. Amen. Say, if only I can be there. If only I can be in Europe. They are dying in the sea. And you are here saying, oh, now God, you have abandoned me. Now look, no, there is no trouble. It can never be worse. Hallelujah. Amen. If the worst it can never be. Amen. God is taking you to a better place. Amen. So let us give thanks always to God for every good thing. And as you are giving thanks, we are inviting God because God is moved. Hallelujah. By the praises of his children. And when God moves, the enemy has to move away. Hallelujah. When God comes near, then God is the one that is embracing you. God is the one that is holding you and the God is the one that is going to keep us in his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. So in these last days let us walk like Nehemiah. Amen. Let us walk in wisdom. Let us redeem every time. A simple prayer may save many people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A, simple, a simple They may not even understand. As I close this one testimony, there was one, one person who, who had decided in his life before he sleep he has to share the gospel with somebody. And one day he was so busy. And he said, no, no. He went to his house and he realized, I have not spoken to somebody. So he went outside. There was no one in the night. But he found somebody who was very drunk. This man, even he could not know between his left and his right. But he said, trust them. This man, I'm going to speak to him the word of the Lord. He shared with him. He prayed for him and he went. <laughs> After some time, when he was coming to the church, the man came and said, hello, you remember me? No. I'm the man who prayed for me when I was completely drunk. Hallelujah. Yeah. At that moment, he was just doing whatever he wanted to do. But still, God worked in that. That prayer changed that man. Hallelujah. Yeah. So that simple prayer you pray, 
wherever you go, wherever you enter, wherever you see that it breaks your spirit, whether it's a family, whether it's a somebody, that prayer, God honors and God is going to bless you and God is going to deliver them and God is going to do great and mighty things. Hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet this afternoon. Father, we are so much grateful even for this word that you've spoken unto us, reminding us, O Jacob God, that we are living in the evil days. We are living in the end times. You don't want us to be drunk by the things of this world. You don't want us to be conformed to this world. But Father, you want us to be transformed. You want us to be renewed in our mind by your word. You want us to be renewed in our mind, knowing that your will and your purpose in our life and in the life of those, O Jacob God, who comes into our contact is going to be changed and is going to be transformed for the praise of your glory. Father, Father, even as you spoken to us, O oh Jehovah God, we know it's not by our own power. We know it's not by our own strength, but we know it's only by your Holy Spirit. You told us, Father, it's your will that all of us be filled with your Holy Spirit. And that's why, Father, we open our heart, we open our mind, our body, our spirit, and our soul. And even our homes, even our jobs, everything that we have, even our finances, we say, Holy Ghost, take over. Be the master, be the king, or be the one who says, be the one to guide every one of us and be the one to show us the way. And Father, we want to pray for every home. We want to pray for every child. We want to pray for every members of this of our family. Whoever, Father, their life has been thrown down. There are no walls in their life. They are in bondage. They are in confusion. They do things they don't want to do. They don't see what we see. Father, we are praying this afternoon on their behalf that, Father, you are going to do something. Oh, you are going to intervene. Oh, you are going to work on their behalf. You are going to open their eyes in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and believe I want us to pray through every one of us that believe there is somebody you know that need prayer there is somebody you need that the enemy is wrecking their life there is somebody of the family you know that the walls are down there is no one that is praying just take this moment pray for them hallelujah oh father God even as we raise our hands in this holy sanctuary you told us we shall weep and we shall lament but the world shall rejoice and my father our joy shall be turned into joy our weeping shall be turned into joy that's our father this moment we want to remember the family members of our families aunties uncles or cousins whatever they may be those under the bondage of drunkenness those under the bondage of drugs those under the bondage of witchcraft, those under the bondage of things that they cannot be able to explain, those operating under the curses of the of generation curses from the ancient ancient fathers, ancestors. This moment we declare that Father God, as you opened our eyes to see the bondage they cannot see, we declare by the blood of Jesus, or by the power of Jesus, every chain can be broken. Let chains be broken in the lives of our brothers and sisters. Let chains be broken in their lives this moment. They may be in Africa. They may be in Europe, they may be in America, whatever they may be. We declare this realm of the spirit. Oh, there are no boundaries tonight. Father, may you intervene tonight. We decide to build the walls. We decide, oh, the God of God, to declare that the devil is a liar in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we we'll give you glory and we we'll give you praise. Father, we know you've done it. There is deliverance this day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray and believe. Hallelujah. I don't know which enemy. I don't know what obstacle you've been confronting. I want at this moment one more to declare what the Bible says in the book of Luke 10, 19, that we've been given power and authority to trample upon every serpent, every scorpions, every powers of the enemy. And believe God, nothing shall be able to hurt you tonight. Hallelujah. So declare that no powers of enemy shall be able to defeat you. Whatever is coming against you, exercise the authority that God has given unto you. Hallelujah. To oh, Father God, we declare this moment that our weapons of warfare, oh, they are no carnal, but they are mighty through God in pulling down stronghold. We pull down every stronghold of the enemy, which he has set against our families, against our children, against our Income again, the subject of a God, even our destiny, the subject of a God, they have comforted by all kinds of things. We declare tonight by the power of your word. You said there's no weapon formed against any one of us that shall be able to prosper. And every time that has risen against any one of us, we condemn in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare the authority tonight. The devil is a liar, any obstacle, any world that is standing before anyone, we command it to be. Oh, about the blood, oh, that was shed on Calvary. We thank you for the victory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and believe. 
Father, even as you've told us in these last days, we need wisdom as we leave. Father, we are praying for wisdom tonight. You say, if anyone lacks of wisdom, let him ask. And Father, you're going to give us without measure. Father, we need more of thy wisdom in our, in, our, in our jobs, in our homes, in wherever we go, Father God. I pray that your wisdom shall be upon every one of us. And even when you open our, our mouth, oh Jehovah God, wisdom shall be found in our mouth. Wisdom shall be found in, upon our lips. Wisdom that is going to bring light, is going to bring salvation, is going to bring peace, is going to bring joy in the life of everyone that we meet. We thank you, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray and believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Just before I close, I always like to give anyone who has never given his life to Jesus. This is the opportunity. This is how we build the walls in our life. Maybe you live that life where the enemy always wrecks you down, brings you down. Always, whenever you think you're about to get your blessing or when you're about to get you to the place where you're going to receive what you've been expecting, something happens. But today it can, it can mark a new beginning in your life. Amen. When you give your life to Jesus, Jesus is going to be your wall. God is going to be the one to embrace you. God is the one who is going to make your ends meet. Hallelujah. By your own strength, you cannot be able to do it. But when you invite him into your heart, he's going to be with you. Hallelujah. He's going to destroy enemy or anything that comes against you. And he's going to, be, to make you victorious. So if you've never given your life to Jesus, You've never prayed the prayer and said, Jesus, be my Lord. Please come forward and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Amen.